I haven't done movie reviews and God, I don't even know the last movie review I did a long time ago. But I feel the need to review this one film. And it, it was one that pissed off people and actually nobody really went to see it. But for some reason I was intrigued. Okay, I was bored. It was Christmas Day. Turns out, even in the year 2017, when they say there's nothing open on Christmas Day, there is nothing open on Christmas Day. I couldn't have fucking, like, if I had a knife stuck in my eye, they would have been like, sorry, this place, the hospital's closed, we can't help you today, it's Christmas, motherfucker, we love Jesus that much. So, I was just, like, looking around for things to watch on, like, Google Play, like, so I could download something, and I saw the movie Mother came up and I was like I'd heard a lot about it it was really divided and you know some people it didn't do well and Jennifer Lawrence is in it but I could overlook the fact of that annoying bitch I did a video on her go look she's an asshole she hates all of us but I decided I'd watch it because I like the director he did Requiem for a Dream he did a couple of other films that Darren Aronofsky whatever he's a Polak and um so here's my thoughts on the movie I'm gonna ruin it so I, I mean you're not missing much so it starts off with Jennifer Lawrence waking up in bed after she just farted. She farted and she sniffs it for some reason I don't understand and then she almost passes out. I'm totally kidding. She wakes up in bed and she's wandering around. She lives in this big fucking like colonial country type house in the middle of nowhere with Javier Badem or whatever that Mexican's name is. And the first thing I noticed about the movie was why they paired up a 20, what is she, 23, 24 year old girl with like a 60 year old man as her husband. That's just supposed to be normal. He looked like her grandfather. I was, I was just constantly distracted by why would this girl be marrying this guy? It's not like he was super hot or anything. He looks like Frankenstein with a fucking bad toupee on his head, but whatever. So Javier Bardem is, they don't have a name in the movie. She's just it or the girl or whatever. And he's just douchebag. So he's like some kind of artist, but you don't really know what he does, if he does paintings, if he does writing, you, because they don't tell you, because it's supposed to be really thought-provoking. The only thought I have was I want my money back. So then Jennifer Lawrence is walking around the house, you just follow her walking around the house, and she, you know, likes to paint and redo things, and she keeps, her rug keeps having its period. And what I mean by that is literally her rug, she'll go over, look at me, oh gee, there's blood there, why is that? She'll stick on it, like put her finger on it like it's squishy, and she'll be like, ooh. Ooh, that's weird. I'll just cover it up with something. Bitch, go investigate it. Your rug is menstruating. Or put a tampon in it or something like that. So then the guy, the writer, whatever his name is, uh, Her Javier Badam is like, you know, I could think I need a right. I need to be creative again. Create, create, create. And she's just like, yeah, I'm going to go paint a wall. But she's really into, you know, do it yourself. So I think she's secretly lesbian. That's my one thought in the film. She's just she's a big bull dyke, you know, but she looked like a lipstick lesbian. So... What is, ends up happening is, and again, I'm going to ruin it, is that Michelle Pfeiffer and Ed Harris come over to the house. Like, first Ed Harris, he's like, hey, can I just hang out for a little bit? I thought this was a bed and breakfast. And Javier Badem sees no problem with it. Jennifer Lawrence, all she can do during this whole movie is look confused. Like, I guess he can stay. He's a stranger. Oh? I mean, that's all she does the whole movie. Like, what? And so they let Ed Harris come in and he's weird and kind of like looking at her. And then, um, oh, also there's this egg. It's like this cheap, like home shopping club egg that the guy has in his study where he creates. And he doesn't want anybody ever touching it because it means something to him because his childhood home burned. I know this makes as much sense as the movie does, but I'm telling you what happened. And so he's, nobody's ever allowed to touch that, right? So then... I don't know, Ed Harris keeps coughing up a lung every five seconds, and then his wife shows up. His wife is played by Michelle Pfeiffer, who looks fucking good. I think she's a vampire, because she looks the same as she did in the 80s. That bitch is hot. Anyway, she comes in there, and it's another mismatched couple. He's about 100 years old, Ed Harris, and Michelle Pfeiffer, I mean, she might be like 50 or something like that, but she looks way too hot to be with this old fucking goat. So he coughs up every five seconds, almost dies, and, you know, Jennifer Lawrence will wander in and be like, do you think we should maybe send him to a hospital? And then Harvey Abedin, no, it is fine. He needs to be, it's like life, and everything is wonderful. This will help me create him coughing up phlegm in our toilet. We love it. Then cut to Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know, it sounds crazy. This is what it is. She keeps going every five minutes into the bathroom that, like, have, like, a Alka-Seltzer. Or so it's like Alka-Seltzer she puts in a water, and it turns it orange, and she's just like... She'll have these episodes where she's just like, mm, Alka-Seltzer that tastes like it's piss colored. Mm. And she drinks it and you're supposed to like, guess what it is? I didn't care. She could be drinking battery acid for all I cared at this point in the movie. 
So then, you know, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and the guy won't leave. And she's kind of like, you know, I'm getting tired of them. And he's like, but they helped me create. It is wonderful, wonderful. And then their two grown adult children show up and have a fight in the middle of the house. For I mean, they literally two boys, I mean, adult men, come in there and just like, you, I can't believe you're going to do this. I can't believe you're going to do this. Ah, and they start beating the fuck out of each other. And one stabs the other one to death or kills him or something like that. He's not completely dead, but he's like bloody and all this. And Jennifer Lawrence is like, because <laughs> that's all she can do in a movie nowadays. She's like, <laughs> What, what is happening? Why are we helping these people? And so Harvey Abernam's like, uh, I'm going to take them to the hospital. Don't go out of the house. And you notice during the movie, she never ever leaves the house. Like, ever. Like, she'll go to the doorway and be like, outside. Should I go outside and pee and wipe myself? She goes back in the house. Later that night, they come back. Oh, I'm sorry. While uh, they're all at the hospital or whatever fake place they went to, they probably just went in the woods and laughed at her. Like, my wife is so fucking stupid. Can you believe this? <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, shit. Well, let's go trash the house later. I'm working on it. What an idiot. I would have been out of here by now. So then the brother who killed his other brother comes back and he's all bloody and Jennifer Lawrence like, ah! and he's like, uh, God help you. And I guess he just came over to say that and leave. Okay. So then, um, Somehow, Jennifer, and I might be skipping around, but this movie was so batshit insane. Javier Bardem gets home, and she's all, like, pissy, and, you know, Jennifer Lawrence finally has an attitude, and she's like, you know, I'm just upset because these people are in our house, and there's a murder almost in our house today. And he goes, the boy died. He died in my arms at the hospital, but I have to write this. I have to write this to help me create. Oh, shit, I can't write. She's like, how come you don't fuck me? Legit, she says, like, how come you don't fuck me? Why don't you fuck me? He's like, oh, you're a dirty bitch. And he starts to, like, physically abuse her but that makes her all wet so she starts like uh, like fighting him and, like, uh, and she's just like you know riding him on the staircase and then all of a sudden you know they go fuck the next morning they wake up she goes i'm pregnant he's like how could you know already she goes i just know and they're like yay i know it makes that much sense i mean he didn't ask for a test or anything she he could he could be swindled on more he'd be paying at fucking alimony fucking child support for years dummy i'd have been like bitch show me Overnight, that fat, I got good sperm, bitch, but not that good. <laughs> it's not it's not Jesus' sperm. It's my own, so don't don't lie to me. But I just know it worked. Yay! And so then it cuts to a – I think it cuts to a couple months later because she's already – unless, you know, who knows? In this movie, she's knocked up overnight. Next day, she's pregnant. she got the belly going, right? And so all of a sudden, all these people start coming over to their house like – he gets excited by something. I forgot what it was now. And he starts going, I can write this now. I can write this. So he starts writing. And you never see what he writes. He shows it to her. He goes, what do you think? She goes, I think it's perfect. And we're like, okay, that's great, bitch. Whatever. You should have left now. She starts painting again. Her her uh, rug starts having its period again. And then all of a sudden, all these people just start coming over with like fucking like uh, napkins. and Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a first time. It's the funeral for the guy the brother that died like they just decided to come back that same night michelle pfeiffer everybody and basically trash her house but which is kind of funny like they're sitting there and they're just like you know like throwing shit on the floor and you know farting and pissing all over the walls and just walking in and she's like this is my house you can't be in there oh she finds two people like fucking in her bedrooms like get out this is my room what is happening bitch leave leave he's crazy and you're staying you deserve this and i think that happened before but then more people come because they're aware somehow of what he's written, even though he hasn't sent it to the publisher yet, I guess. I don't know. And all these people on the front porch, like, fan, you know, like, oh, please, we want to take a picture. Oh, we love you. We love you. And she's like, you know, this is not normal. I'm nine months pregnant. He's like, neither is getting pregnant overnight, bitch. Shut up. So they're all like, oh, we love you. We love you. So she shuts the door. They start coming in the house and they literally are like bouncing up and down in her sink. They're, they're fucking knocking over tables. They're just trashing the place. She's like, but man, what's happening? What's happening? And then it's like this long shot where she's running through the house and there's riots happening in her house and people are being shot in the head in front of her in one room and another room is uh, 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 like an orgy almost. Another room is a fucking another series of murders. And she's just going from room to room, never leaving the house again. Bitch, what is wrong with you? Okay, so, so um, oh, backtrack again, sorry. Also, Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer, they knocked over the egg, like the secret, you know, home shopping egg that he got for like, you know, he thinks it's worth a million dollars, probably worth like five. And, um... He runs in there, and that was the only thing that pissed him off they did. They tore his house up. They fucking 
there's murders happening in your house all because of these motherfuckers and there's more people coming with flashlights and shit to like they're all there's like about a thousand people literally in the house at this point and they're all like um and he's mad about a faberge egg like that got knocked over he was that's what set him off this he doesn't care about she's like why don't you make them leave where will they go they've come to see me i was like i don't care where they go motherfucker but you need to go to the insane asylum and i'm leaving so here's the part they really got me so she, he finds her in this chaos and he doesn't try to get her out of the house. He tries to get her to a safe room, which is, of course, the bedroom. And she's like, but outside. She sees the doors open. She's like, outside is that way. He's like, no, no, go this way. Uh, we don't need outside. That's where help is. So he drags her into the bedroom. And she, of course, has her baby in the bedroom. She's like, oh, I'm all pregnant after a day. Oop, yep. And she has her kid. And he's sitting there looking at her. And she's like, let me hold my baby. She goes, no. Let me hold my baby. No. So then for like two days or something, literally, because night comes, morning comes, she's sitting there holding her fucking wretched baby, and he's sitting there like, he's waiting for her to like drop it or something. She's like, oh, you can't touch it, fucker. I don't trust this Mexican. Oh, so you, ooh, you're lucky he's here. And so I forgot exactly what happens again, because this movie is so batshit insane. The publisher comes over again and starts telling... And it's played by somebody from Saturday Night Live, Kristen Wiig. And she's like, oh, let's get a picture of the girl. Let's get a picture of her. And it's somehow, oh, no, everybody's trying to get into the bedroom. And he, like, blocked them. But then they finally get in and they take the baby. And they're like, you know, it's like the baby's crowd surfing at, like, a heavy metal concert. It's like the baby's like, wah, wah. And everybody's like, oh. And Jennifer Lawrence, where they go, no, I'm his mommy, I'm his mommy, please, please, please. And sure enough, they break his fucking neck. I'm not even kidding. I laugh. I'm sorry. I laugh. The baby's like, ah. And then the baby, they're still like, they're playing like volleyball with the baby. <laughs> and so then the baby disappears out of sight and she runs and she's in front of an altar and the baby's all like dismembered and shit. And they're eating the baby, which it was kind of my favorite part of the movie. It did warm my heart. It reminded me of, you know, what me and, you know, my parents used to do back in, in the woods every, uh, every day after Christmas. It was, never mind. Anyway, but yeah, they're all like, mm. and she's like, oh, you're all insane. No, bitch. Now, you know, they're insane. They've eaten your baby. And she's like, you killed my baby. You killed my baby. So she picks up a shard of, oh. And then after they kill her baby, they for some reason decide to whoop her ass, which it was Jennifer Lawrence, so I was glad. And they're like, whore, bitch, cunt. Like just beating the fuck out of her. <laughs> she's like black eyes. She's like, eh. <laughs> baby guts falling on her head and shit. She gets up somehow, like after almost being beaten into a coma. And then she decides she's going to run downstairs and destroy the house. Bitch, you should have left. Again, you could have just called a mover. It would have been a lot easier. She runs downstairs and she lights the place on fire and then, you know, Javier Bardem is like, no, and all the people are like, ah, and then the house just like gets, catch, catches on fire and she's still fucking alive. She's all burned and she's all fucking mangled. And then here's the part where it gets me. He picks her body up. He starts walking her through the burned house and she's like, ah. and he's like, I love you so much. You know that, right? She's like, ah. and he's like, Oh, you give nothing but love. I, I give nothing but love. It's like, get her to a burn unit. I don't know why you're talking to her right now. He's like, and she says something else to him. She's like, just help me or something like that. And he goes like, oh, what left do you have to give me? Like, you give me everything, the house, uh, you know, all this bullshit. And she's like, oh, okay, you could give me your love. She's like, oh, my love. She's like delirious because she's burned to death and she's seen her baby eaten and all this shit happen. So he rips her heart out and then he puts it in that fucking egg thing, I guess. And they cut to the house magically, like, healing itself. And all throughout the movie, by the way, the house was getting all, like, sooty and looked like a fire at random times and nobody knew why. And then at the very end of the movie, you see another girl waking up just like she did at the beginning. Going, Honey, where are you? And that's supposed to mean something. Now, I've read stuff about this. It's supposed to be Jennifer Lawrence represented Mother Earth and this is how people are trashing the Earth. What I realized this movie really means is it is – Anybody can make something with somebody they think is a star, Jennifer Lawrence, and she proved that she's not that big of a star because nobody saw the motherfucker except my stupid ass says that bored. And that it was a piece of shit and a waste of time and pretentious is all fuck. What the, I mean, it just defied logic at this point. Like, I, I get if you want to make some allegory about something or it was supposed to be biblical, some people were saying, because the house represented paradise and 
I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer and the other guy represented Adam and Eve and the Forbidden Fruit was a home shopping egg. Listen, no, 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 no. I, I, I can get into a deep movie, but it's got to be good, not this fucking wretched piece of shit that they showed. I mean, it was entertaining just for the fucking sheer batshit crazy. Like, skip the first hour, watch the batshit crazy part. It's probably on YouTube by now. You don't even have to rent it or anything like that. See the baby gets a little head and they play baby volleyball with it and shit like that. That's the only part worth uh, seeing in this movie. And, uh... Yeah, that's it. Thought I'd save you some time and money and just tell you that I'm going to say Mother is the most batshit insane, useless movie of the year, 2017.